What's going on, guys? It's been, I feel like it's been a long time since I've turned on my camera and done anything at all. So, uh, figured it's toward the end of July. I missed all the Tuesdays in July because of work. So, I got to get one live stream out of the way. And I actually had a day off. I, I don't know how I got a Friday off. Don't ask me. I didn't ask questions, I just took it. So, here we are Friday night live stream. So, my thumbnail will probably be the Tuesday night live stream. And then I'll do my uh, Microsoft paint expertise and uh, spraying out the Tuesday and just drawing in Friday. So there you go. Uh, before we get started with some books, because uh, it's, hey, we got a lot of books to show tonight. Let's get into that chat because once again, it's, I felt like it's a long, long time since I checked out a chat, which I don't expect too many people to pop in because I literally just scheduled this five minutes ago. And here we are. It is Friday because people they don't want to watch me on a Friday. They want to live the real life. So nonetheless, we got two people in the chat. We got Caleb, Comics Murph Murphy, what's going on, man? He says, yo! See, well, oh, he says, Mr. Newsstand himself, and we got royalty in the house. We got the Prince of New Zealand. We got the uncanny Kyle Walker. What's going on, Kyle? Always happy. He got a, two hell of a good X-Men books recently. Um, so check out Kyle and his channel and all that good stuff. Uh, he may show those one day, I'm sure, but he got some nice books and a phenomenal deal recently on some X-Men. So, well, without further ado, you guys like to see the comics. Uh, so I'll start with a, uh, I think this was a road trip I took uh, at the end of June. Um, so two half price books is worth of haul. So here we go. And it's been a minute since I've even looked at this haul because basically today's July 26th. So this will be a surprise to me too because I buy the books. I set them down, and then I go to work and then forget I bought the book sometimes. So let's see what I got. So first up, trying to fill in those uh, Spider-Man gaps. I got Amazing Spider-Man, $329, $1, Eric Larson, because why not? Uh, so just some run filler here for that run. Also have issue 331, which I was missing out of the run. So like I said... See these for bucks? Go ahead and grab them. They're definitely worth an easy $1 bill all day, every day. Got a newsstand, 337 So love that cover with the Sinister Six. So I thought that was really awesome. Here's one you don't leave in the dollar bin. Um, and actually, it's like right... There we go. Up there, signed by uh, Jim Lee and Jeff Loeb. But hey, now I have another copy for a buck because why not? So, uh, wasn't going to leave this laying around in a dollar bin, that's for sure. So, one dollar for that, one of my best finds of the last month, in my opinion. Uh, love this book. Great cover. Great interiors, too. Uh, speaking of that Jim Lee, Jeff Loeb, Batman run, I also had 613, which I was missing out of that run. And, hey, look at that. It's one of those newsstand copies. So, don't see the newsstands of this run too often. So, definitely couldn't leave that one laying in there for one dollar. Another one I was missing out of the run was 611. So that kind of uh, sets up the Superman Batman fight with Poison Ivy mind control. So, like I said, I love this whole run. I already had this one, but it was the only other one in the bin. So definitely just stack, put that in the stack. So 615, uh, just so Jim Lee could draw Nightwing. So there you go. Here's an interesting one for a buck. I actually had to look this up in the store to see, like, what this book was, but here's a copy. Come on, camera, really? All right, there we go. Camera, it's it's getting the uh, the uh, ring rust out, I guess they say in the wrestling business. But I got this Moon Knight number one uh, from the David Finch run, but it says not for resale on it. So I guess this was basically a sample copy provided to retailers, uh, given to them to decide if they wanted to order this book or not. So Thought that was kind of weird, uh, you know, not resell copy of Moon Knight number one. So, look this up on eBay. It's about a ten dollar book if anyone was curious. So, just well, an oddity. Who doesn't like their oddities in the world of comic books? I know we all do. So, and then uh, we got Green Arrow issue eight, a B cover uh, from Neil Adams for a buck. So, uh, I think Neil Adams did like a, a run of B covers for this, and they had a lot of them in the bins that day. But I thought this was the nicest one, so I went ahead and just got this one. So, and uh, actually this next book, I'm glad Caleb's in the chat because I was supposed to be on the hunt uh, when uh, Tony Sanders decided to go on a vacation, which, hey, everyone deserves vacation. So, shoot, I love that show, uh, The Hunt. It's actually on tonight. I think there's a, a cover championship defense 
Uh, but in kayfabe terms, I think, you know, they're all ducking me over there and that stuff. But uh, I brought this one out for Caleb. I think we're supposed to do homage covers. So I bought this for a dollar that week. I was supposed to be on. Uh, so you got Rocket Raccoon with the uh, Wolverine number one Frank Miller swipe. So, hey, I think this would have got a Caleb Comics Murpho on the hunt. So I had to get that. But, you know, it just didn't pan out. <laughs> Well, it looks like we got Bear Island Comics in the chase. It sounded way better today. Yeah, before um, I actually slept through the Swamp Thing review last night and then woke up, uh, I was like, oh, crap, I, I got to get in that chat. Apologize to Chad and Ledgy because I just I, I told him I'd probably be on there and then my bed looked comfortable after another 12-hour day of work. And then I woke up at midnight. So sorry, guys. But I'm like, ah, oh, I was getting to hang out, say what's going on. Turns out they were still live. What basically, so I was half asleep the whole time, and yeah, it was a two hour live stream, so go check that out. I still haven't checked out the whole live stream, but uh, thanks for the concern, Bear Island. I appreciate it. Caleb says, Yep, they're ducking my boy, Big C Wood, Mr. Newstain. I, I know that they hashtag they don't want none, definitely use that to uh, let them know that they don't want none over there at the hunt. So, old, old McSand. He's trying to keep the man down. He just he's, he's got that, you know, his finger on the button. He's got his shovel out, burying people left and right. So freaking McSand won't let good people like me on his show. So good old McSand. I uh, found this one for 20 cents. It's pretty beat up, but I just heard the stack today. I was at half price books. It's impulse number 15. Uh, but it's a DCU variant. Nah, that's not gonna catch on, but uh DC Universe variant. So people love them, the DC Universe stuff. So it's got a sticker on it. It's ticked off. Uh, but hey, 20 cents. And who doesn't love some impulse? So we got some Mark Wade action on there. Always love that run. Uh, here we go. So this is from the other half price books. They don't have the uh, dollar bins like the ones next to me do, but they have some good books for like a dollar fifty to four bucks. Um, so I got this one for a dollar fifty. G.I. Joe issue two hundred. And it's a uh, herb trimpy uh, variant cover. So I thought that looked really cool. Um, so yeah, nice little cards. It actually almost even looks like an actual sketch. So I thought that was really nice. So I got that for a buck 50, uh, for a dollar 50, I will never leave a copy of Watchmen laying in a cheap bin. So I got Watchmen issue number eight for a dollar 50. So anytime I see these, they're getting picked up. So I thought that was a really nice buy for the price. We got Tales of the Teen Titans issue number 90. Just more run filler, basically. Oh, new stand. There you go. So, got to love getting the uh, Perez Wolfman Titans run, even though uh, no Perez on there. But it's from the same run. So, there you go. Got some classic Thor action. We got Thor 250 uh, for a dollar fifty. So, there you go. Why not? I don't really collect a lot of Thor, but I figured for the price, this is a, you know, not going to leave quarter Marvel in there for that. We've got TMNT Adventures, number one, $1.50. Uh, there, so there's a couple different versions of this book, I guess. One has like a dedicated to whoever at the bottom. That's the one I have uh, originally. I got that one off, I think, Evan from the Those Guys Hangouts chat. Uh, so I found this one for buck fifty. It's just the standard cover, I guess. I think there's a new stand floating around out there, too. This is the third variation of this. So figured, why not go ahead and just get the, the normal one? Dollar fifty, love me some turtles. But to the point where every time I see turtles, I gotta buy me some turtles because for some reason you you don't see it every day because the people who collect turtles like me they get them and then they hang on to them because hey it's turtles that's what you do. Um, so it's just a passionate community going after those books. So you don't see them in dollar bins too often because of that. Uh, we got some. Uh, Middleton Supergirl action. This is issue number 36. I believe, yep, another dollar fifty comic. So I thought that was a cool cover. So I didn't want to leave that one in there. So wouldn't mind trying to get the uh, cover run on that because there's some awesome covers there. Uh, I'm glad to have this one. This is uh, Infinite Crisis number six. Got it for two bucks. Uh, if you guys keep track of my channel at all, you guys know that this is one of my favorite individual issues ever of anything. It's the death of Connor Kent. Uh, and Infinite Crisis is one of my favorite runs ever. <laughs> so I didn't have the Jim Lee cover, so now I do. I thought that was a, a nice pickup for two bucks. 
Um, I have the uh, George Perez one signed by Jeff John, so now I have both covers. So I was very happy with that. Uh, here is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Urban Legends number one. Two bucks. Um, so this reprints the image run from, I believe it was the late 90s. I actually have them. Well, they used to be up there, and I actually got my stuff sorted, so now they're over there. Uh, but I figured I'd get the IDW reprint uh, since it was laying there. All right, so my last two books, or the same book, basically. So I got DC Universe Rebirth number one. So I found these two copies for cheap. So I believe this one is a reprint B cover, I think, if I remember right, based on the uh, $5.99 original price tag. Uh, luckily, half price books being half price books. That charged me three bucks for this cool Ethan Van Skyver cover on that one. Hey, you remember the three Jokers? Isn't that a thing that's supposed to happen still? So, yeah, there's the three Jokers on uh, 2016. So, there you go. Planting those seeds long term, I guess, DC. So, uh, there's that. So, I thought that was a cool cover. And then I believe this was the B cover for the first printing. Uh, just a cool Ivan Rice um, cover on Rebirth number one. Uh, so, uh, this has been one I've been looking for. for Because this is actually a really good read if you guys hadn't read it. Uh, you know, before Tom King came and ruined poor uh, Wally West's life. This is the book we got him back in. So, two bucks for that. Very happy with that purchase. And that was that June 26th haul. So, before we get into the next haul, let's get back into that chat. We got Bob World in the chat. What's going on, man? Happy to see old Bob World in the chat. And we got the Mastodon Comics and Collecting. I think he's out touring the Midwest. He has asked me today about my thoughts on Steak and Shake, and I kind of gave it to him. Like, yeah, don't just drive by the Steak and Shake, man. It's not worth it. Go to like Five Guys or something if you're going to spend the money. <laughs> he said, I keep attempting to hit up a shop while on my trip, but it ain't working out. Yeah, I don't know your exact trip, man. But yeah, Indiana, as you can see, hopefully you got some decent books based on the hauls I get. Uh, but yeah, also don't sleep on your antique shops. If you drive off an antique shop on the highway, just stop and see what they got. That's where I find some of my best finds. So Donnie, if you're driving by an antique store, consider that a comic stop too, bud. So that's my advice to you as you're going through the Midwest. Um, with that, I'll pick up another pile of books that had just been sitting here. Like, uh, hopefully I apologize for my lack of content this month and uh, big thanks to those who checked out my uh, Walking Dead final issue review. I actually got some nice traffic on that video for my podunk little channel here. Uh, that was the last video I put out, so thank you guys for checking that. Actually, I think I still have the book sitting up here for reference. Uh, so I did get this one within this month as well. So if you guys want to know my thoughts on this, uh, this was my previous video. Uh, so I thought it was a very nice ending. Surprisingly pleasant ending from Robert Kirkman. Uh, so definitely check out my review on that. Um, so I think also this month is uh, more books. So uh, I don't know why I keep picking up Immortal Hulk. I hear it's a phenomenal read, but I just have not. I've been, you know, it's one of those instances you get behind on a book and you get behind on a book and you get behind on a book. And I think I'm behind like eight issues now or something like that. I just got 21 today. I left it downstairs. Kind of right. Yep. This was on top of this stack. Um, so shame on me. I really need to sit down and read this, but there's so many other things I need to sit down and read. So this may just end up getting dropped for now, but I, I keep hearing that people love this book. Nonetheless, hey, beautiful Alex Ross cover. So shame on me. Need to read it. Don't kill me. <laughs> uh, here's another, uh, been a consistent run from Grant Morrison so far. So here's Green Lantern, uh, number nine. Just keeps getting weirder and weirder, but hey, that's what I expect exactly from one of my favorite writers, Grant Morrison. Um, so I can't wait to see where he's taking Green Lantern. I feel like there's an end game here, and we probably won't see that for another year. So if the, depending on how long DC lets this title breathe, I think they're a the, uh, guy like Grant Morrison, they're going to let him do whatever he wants. So there you go. Looks like we've got Just a Rican in his comics in the chat. What's going on, Just a Rican? Uh, he says, Bullet Club, New Japan, pro wrestling all the way, buddy. Yeah, it's just, I, went, I had to go into a conference call today at work, so I figured what better way to go in than a Bullet Club t-shirt and flip-flops because it was, it was day 12 in a row for me. So, yeah, it's it's been fun at work. <laughs> uh, next up, we got Deceased Issue 3. This continues to be a fun book. So if you guys – I keep saying it. If you guys like the, the Marvel Zombies run by Robert Kirkman uh, – 
I don't see any reason why you look, shouldn't like Deceased. Uh, my only drawback is in that first issue, they try to explain why the zombies exist, whereas Marvel zombies, you kind of just get thrown into it. You get thrown into it when the sentry lands as a zombie from space and things go from there. So kind of similar to this, I guess, you know, things happen in space and other universe is screwed. So there you go. Uh, but nonetheless, a lot of fun. And my phone is going off somewhere and I have no idea where it is. So, oh, well, oh, it's down here. Sorry about that. All right. Next up, we got Buffy issue six. So this has been, I keep saying this has been a fun, fun book. Uh, so you get the, uh, Ultimate Spidey treatment for Buffy. Um, they are really screwing up Xander bad already, but now they're screwing up Willow too. So Willow is kind of sacrificing a chunk of her soul uh, to uh, try to save Xander, try to kind of make him like Angel was in the series, a vampire with a soul. Um, so we will see what happens there. Uh, are we going to get the uh, the dark version of Willow already? Are they all screwed? Um, Robin Woods thrown in there, who's the principal in season seven. Is he a new member of the Scooby gang? I got to keep reading to find out. So I, I've really been enjoying the Buffy run from Boom. So good job, guys. A good job, Jordy Belair, on that one. We got TMNT Batman Volume 3. Uh, fun book once again. If you guys like the amalgam stuff that DC and Marvel did in the 90s, I think this is a good throwback to that style of storytelling. Uh, they're just merging turtle characters with DC characters. You get anti-monitor Krang. What's not the love there? Um, so this book, you finally get to see like April O'Neil and that stuff in this one. So a lot of fun once again. Analog number six, you get a solid series from Jerry Duggan. Um, so this book took a bit of a hiatus, came back this month with issue six. I'm going to stay on board for now. This issue didn't do lots for him, but I did enjoy the first trade's worth of comics. Uh, so definitely, uh, at least check out the first trade. It's probably out now. If it's, if not, then it should be out very soon. Uh, but always love me some Jerry Duggan, solid writer there for sure. Uh, cover by for me this month, Batgirl 36. So these, these Josh Middleton covers, man, they're just phenomenal. So every time I see a good one, I have to get it. I saw the new one today with the cardstock cover with the, it was like the Oracle face or whatever. Wasn't a huge fan of these uh, these newer face variant covers, so I've been passing on the uh, B covers of DC lately, but I think this is the last really nice one they put out. I thought it was awesome, so I got it. Uh, I know a lot of people love this book, and hey, it had a lot of great covers. So we got Invisible Woman number one, uh, a cover from Adam Hughes, which is a beautiful cover on that. Happy to finally see Invisible Woman get her moment in the spotlight. So solid read. I may pick up issue two. We'll see. Trying to... Uh, cut down on the um you know the weekly picks as you guys can kind of see with me going from weekly to monthly on these live streams but nonetheless solid read uh maybe a future marvel unlimited for me uh to read this but i definitely enjoyed issue one so far we've got young justice issue number seven this is an interesting book um i, I really want to love me some bendis and some young Justice. i'm happy to bring in because these characters, there's a lot of my boys in this stable of characters here. You got Connor, uh, you got my boy Impulse, and my boy Tim Drake. Uh, so, And then, of course, Cassie and the others, too. They're all fun characters, but uh, we'll see what happens with this book. This was an interesting issue. Basically, they're just getting tossed around the DC multiverse for some reason. Uh, so this is almost kind of like a joke book where the Young Justice team gets thrown on a multiverse, say, like a version of the Kingdom Come universe we're all familiar with as DC readers, and they're like, we need to get these jerks off our planet. So they end up going from multiverse to multiverse, and people try to help them, then they're like, oh, crap, we actually sent them to this universe or that universe. Um, so it just makes a lot of heroes look dumb, I guess, so... We'll see what it. I, I think I'm going to give this series till issue ten, um, and then I'm dropping it because I, I mean I legitimately I have fun with this book. I love the characters in this book, but man, this last issue was a little bit rough. I got to admit, and they just changed the uh, artist too. They went from Pete Tomasi, or I'm not Pete Tomasi, but um, I forget right this second. Uh, but we get uh, John Timms, who's a good artist too. But I prefer. Uh, I'm going to think of his name in about 10 minutes. I prefer the previous artist better. Let's just put it that way. Actually, you know what? Let me just look at my wall here. 
And, of course, the, the boxes are blocking. All right, I'll stop embarrassing myself and move on. Uh, last issue on this little stack I'll talk about. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 95, the spec book of the month, I guess, besides the Walking Dead final issue. Um, Jenica, this character here, becomes the new Ninja Turtle in it. Uh, we have a female turtle now. And people are going bananas over this book. Actually, I did find this one in my shop this month as well. Uh, I got a plank for TMNT 51, which is the first appearance of Jenica. And then this is the first appearance of her as a turtle. So people, they're, they're buying these books up like crazy, uh, speculating on poor Jenica's health condition here. So we'll see what actually happens in the uh, City at War story. But nonetheless, the City at War uh, storyline going and the turtle book now is phenomenal. Uh, this issue, I felt like besides the whole female turtle thing, not a lot happens in this issue. They just keep running from the foot, the mafia, and everybody else. Um, but the storyline as a whole has been excellent. Uh, they're just trying to survive this chaos in New York they've got going on. Why Splinter tries to retain ownership of the foot clan. So there's a lot of cool stuff going on in this book now. So if you get this book, I, I, if you can get it cheap, get it cheap. But just if nothing else, wait for the trade at this point because it's it's a good read worth your time if you like turtles at all, in my opinion. Um, so there's that. All right, before we keep going in the stacks here, let's get back to that chat. We got Thomas Wayne in the chat. He says, what's going on, Green Lantern? Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get my rings on for this video today. But, you know, me and Thomas, we love some Green Lantern. Uh, that's for sure. We got the great legend show in the chat. Thank you for the share, man. And he says, newsstand. Uh, I still, oh, of course, today, the one book I didn't get a chance to read. I'll try to read between this stream and uh, Comic Core tonight, but that's uh, Farmhand. So we all love us some Farmhand. I know issue 10 came out today or uh, Wednesday, and uh, that's going to be like the, the break between that and then the next trade's worth of issue 11. So it should be a pretty big issue this week. I can't wait to read it. Uh, so farmhand issue to I know uh, legend loves him some of that farmhand. Uh, Just Rican says it's crazy that book is spiked up, but my LCS gave it to me for cover price. Yeah, luckily I got mine for cover price as well. Um, Caleb Comics Murph says I'm raining east to west. Yeah, I need to get recaught up on that series. Uh, I read, I collected that. I think the first ten issues of that when it came out, and I wouldn't mind going back and rereading a lot of those. See, this is how long it's been since I've done a live stream. I made the uh, rookie mistake and only brought one water with me. <laughs> All right. Oh, we got Bake the Snake. What's going on, man? I always like seeing Bake the Snake in a chat. Actually, I do want to take this time real quick to direct you guys to the, uh, the description below. Tonight around 9 p.m. Eastern time, that is, Pope Grimey is having an auction on his channel. And uh, he's doing uh, an auction where the proceeds go to his friend's funeral fund. Uh, so definitely check out Pope Grimey's channel and, you know, throw a few bucks his way because uh, he's having an auction for a good cause. Uh, apparently a friend of his, uh, their friend lost their life, so they need help paying for some funeral expenses. Uh, so Pope Grimey's having an auction tonight on his channel um, to help support that person. He didn't say who or what have you. Uh, but definitely, you know, if Pope Grimey says he's helping someone, he's helping someone. So definitely check out his channel tonight around nine, uh, bid up his books and, uh, definitely go and see him cause he's a good guy. Uh, all right. So here's what I picked up today and tried to binge read as fast as I could, uh, because I did, unfortunately, because I had to go to work this morning, I had to squeeze a nap in cause we got some live streaming to do tonight. We got this show. We got the comic core at 10 PM Eastern. You never know what's going to happen on the comic core. I sure don't. Actually, I do know one thing. Cat Run Figures is having an interview uh, tonight on our channel on the, uh, what they call it, the Off the Rails live stream. It's the A Show. It's the red brand. It's Comcore tonight. That's what I call it. But anyway, Cat Run Figures is having an uh, interview. I think it's called, it's like, what, like Junior High Horrors, I think the book is called, or High School Horrors. I haven't had a chance to read the book yet because my shop didn't have it. Uh, but she's got a creator interview on there tonight as a part of our stream. And then uh, I think it's either either the end of the stream tonight or tomorrow we're announcing the winner for the Comic Core contest. So definitely check out the Comic Core this weekend for some fun live streaming content. But anyway, back to the books. Uh, like I said, still going to re read this one before the stream tonight. Farmhand number 10. 
I believe this actually just got picked up by AMC to go to series. Um, so I'm surprised this got picked up before Chu did. I don't know why Chu wouldn't have got picked up first because, I mean, I love me some Parm Hand, but Chu, oh, man, it's such a phenomenal series. And it's a, a series that's done. It's 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 literally over there on my shelf, the whole thing. So obviously I feel like this has a lot of room to breathe still, so I'm, I'm curious to see what comes of the AMC deal Farm Hand. But nonetheless, great series so far. I'm going to set that to the side there. Read this one right before I hit the live button. We got Spider-Man Life Story, Issue 5, the 2000s. And, man, if you guys aren't on board with this series, definitely seek it out. Or I guess at this point you probably wait for the trade because there's probably only one issue left. Uh, we've got Chip Zdarsky, Mark Bagley on this series. And, man, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, just check it out. The Mark Bagley art takes me back to my Ultimate Spider-Man days of collecting. Um but I just wish comics would do more things like this more often. You actually see a character in continuity and the story is told from the 1960s up until presumably the present because the next issue is the 2010s, which, hey, we're in the 2010s. Cool. Um, but you actually get to see, like, old man Parker uh, fight, you know, and he's just fighting a good fight still, basically. Uh, this In this particular issue, he's going through the Civil War, basically, between Cap and Iron Man. Uh, you get to see kind of like the storyline play out from Spider-Man, the other with Morlin coming in and trying to kill all the spiders, which I'm sure the next issue will probably have a little bit of Spider-Verse action in it because of Morlin. And yeah, it's it's a lot of cool stuff they're, they're figuring out in this book. I, I hope they, I wouldn't mind, I probably would be gimmicky, but I'd like to see Marvel put out, you know, do this treatment for other characters, uh, like, you know, probably you could do a Captain America, Thor, Iron Man, so on and so forth. Or maybe just do an X-Men life story. I would dig that for sure. Uh, here's an interesting one. Well, you got House of X, number one. Probably like everyone's biggest book of the week because it's Hickman, it's X-Men. Uh, I think he's trying to outweird Grant Morrison's new X-Men run. <laughs> I don't know what all I've missed in the X-Universe because that last uncanny X-Men run, those first five issues were rough. I could not get through them. <laughs> so I gave up that series. Uh, so we've already put that in the past, and now we have House of X, number one. And there isn't a lot of explanation as to what's going on or how we got to this point here. Um, but it looks like we're kind of going Genosha times a thousand. It looks like they're basically setting up tent close to where Kyle Walker lives. <laughs> so they've got a new island called Krakoa. Uh, there are no humans allowed on at all. They can teleport on and off at, at any point. Uh, Legend, while you're watching the Fantastic Four make an appearance in this book, so I know you'll like it. Uh, but so far, decent read. I just wouldn't mind a little bit more explanation as to how we got here, because you got Professor X, he's running around with looks like a Cerebro helmet. Uh, Jean's in this full-on Marvel Girl costume. I'm guessing if I read the uh, Age of X-Men stuff, Maybe this would make a little bit more sense. I'm not sure. Uh, but at this point, I'm not read, going back and reading all that stuff until it's probably on a Marvel Unlimited. Uh, but I'm gonna, I'm, I'll am gonna i probably add this in uh, Powers of 10 to my read list uh, because at least spurred my interest. Pepe Loraz's art was pretty good in it, i got to be honest. And I always like me some Hickman. So I know Hickman, like Morrison, he's one of those long-term storytellers. Uh, so you got to let his content breathe, and it's very rewarding if you read everything. Uh, so I'll be on board for House of X, Powers of Ten, seeing where they're going there. They had this preview book, too, uh, so I'll probably put that on my read list for tonight between shows. Got Valkyrie, number one. So everyone's talking about Jane Foster now. They brought Nat Natalie Portman back into the MCU fold. Uh, so a decent read here. Uh, I don't know if it's decent enough to get me to come back for issue two. Uh, we'll see, but I did like the kind of uh, twist ending this had with the, uh, I won't spoil it yet for those who, you know, haven't read it, but you get like a cool villain uh, that has a god sword, basically, that normally isn't a Thor or Valkyrie villain. So pretty cool ending, in my opinion. It definitely makes me interested in maybe reading an issue two at some point. Uh, so definitely enjoyed that. And then my last read of the day. Uh, was Batman Curse of the White Knight. Uh, so I will say this. Uh, this is some of the finest Sean Murphy art I've seen like 
I mean, just look at this Azrael cover. It's amazing. <laughs> and the formatting on this one, I, this is the B cover. They might have did the, the $1 extra, like, better format again. I know this is a $5 book. Uh, the, as you can tell, hey, shiny, look at that. Uh, the uh, the format of this Black Label book is awesome. Uh, but the story, for me, didn't have that same hook as the, um, you know, Batman White Knight uh, Volume 1, I guess, whatever you want to call it at this point. Um I would have liked to see more conflict between the Joker and uh, Jack Napier. It just seems like the Joker's in full control now, unfortunately. And I felt like at the end of White Knight, it was more Jack Napier. Uh, but it looks like Joker's manipulating Azrael uh, into coming back to hunt Bruce Wayne, which is it's going to be a good story down the line. But uh, just for like an issue one, it, it was a eh? <laughs> but the art. Big thumbs up. Like uh, Sean Murphy still draws uh, phenomenal cars. Uh, but yeah, like his character work is some of the best I've seen from him. Uh, so definitely, I, I just went and added that to my pull list because I, I have a feeling I won't be disappointed, even though I was slightly disappointed in that first issue. Uh, and then the last book I bought, I had to get this. My, my shop owner actually cracked up when I bought this. So it's a Marvel graphic novel, and it's the official adaptation to Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So I've never seen or heard of this book before. Uh, but I had no idea Marvel printed Who Framed Roger Rabbit, uh, especially in the graphic novel form. But hey, four bucks. I wasn't going to pass this up. It was cheaper than the original cover price of $7. Uh, so that was definitely all over this for $4. <laughs> Actually, ended up uh, somehow me and my shop owner had a conversation. Started with Who Framed Roger Rabbit. He saw it in theaters. Then we started talking about how disappointing the movie Cool World was in the 90s. So... There's that, but everyone loves him some Who Framed Roger Rabbit, so hey, Jessica Rabbit there. Who doesn't love her? And uh, old Bob Hoskins, a.k.a. Mario, so, and Spee from Hook. So who doesn't love him some Bob Hoskins? <laughs> All right, so let's get back into that chat, and then we'll go, hey, we go over some more stacks. That's what we do here. Uh, we got JLS Comics. What's going on, man? He's been putting out some cool uh, post-Comic-Con videos on his channel, so always check out JLS for some great content. Uh, Caleb Comics First says he hasn't read Valkyrie yet. Yeah, it's definitely a solid read, Caleb. You'll definitely like it being a Thor fan. I know that. Uh, he says that White Knight book is awesome as well. Thomas Wayne says that Batman is badass cover front and back. Yeah, absolutely. That B covers. Really, I mean, both covers are really good, but I prefer the Asriel B cover. I think I'm going to try to get all of those uh, character covers. <laughs> Just, uh, I'm sorry. A great legend says, I agree, Rika. Good to see me back live. Yep. I, I had to get at least one live stream before this month ended. I was running out of time and I have to close next Tuesday. So it wasn't going to happen next Tuesday. So I figured, screw it. We're going live tonight because I got to get that energy up for 10 p.m. Comic Core tonight. Um, <laughs> Mastodon says he liked Cool World. Yeah. I'll be honest. Like, I think I was kind of. I was expecting Who Framed Roger Rabbit when I originally saw that movie, so I had a bad taste in my mouth after I watched it. Uh, but I think the older version of me likes Cool World better than I did originally. So it's got that like it's got that weird '90s feel to it, and it's just it's yeah I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> but I definitely probably enjoy it more now than I did as a kid. But at the end of the day, I watched Who Framed Roger Rabbit way over that. Uh, JLS says, did you hear Jimmy Uso was arrested for DUI? Yeah, I did hear that. Stupid uh, the Usos, man. It, it's just like, do they do they try to get arrested now? Is that what the Usos do? So I guess, you know, they're they're redefining the words Uso penitentiary. So there you go. We got comics with Bueller in our chat. What's going on, man? He says, what's up, Seawood? Hope things are going good. Yeah, I'm off work finally, so things are getting better, that's for sure. Um, so we'll go ahead and get to the next, actually, we'll just do this stack that I got today at half price books. So it's been a while, actually June 26th, the exact date. Cause it's dated on those comics down there. So it was one month today since I bought anything from half price books and I got this entire stack, I think for $14. So can't beat a whole stack of books for 14 bucks or less. So we'll just go ahead and go through what I got. So we got Ghost Rider number 27. Cool Jim Lee cover on that one. So definitely have to get me some Jim Lee action for a buck. I didn't even know he did covers for Ghost Rider, but hey, he was the big X-Men guy from Marvel at the time. Uh, so definitely decided to get that. 
They also had 26, which is another Jim Lee X-Men crossover. So I thought that was a really nice cover. So like I said, I don't collect too much Ghost Rider, but I had a good good luck today collecting Ghost Rider. So I figured, why not? We got Ghost Rider, number one. I believe this is the first Danny Ketch Ghost Rider. Got it for $1, so I wasn't going to leave that laying. Uh, so luckily, this is one they just... Actually, it somehow survived in the dollar bins for 10 days before anyone bought it. So book I didn't have in my collection. Happy to have it now. We'll save the 20 centers for last because I, clean, I cleaned up their 20 cent bins. Uh, here's a good one. We got uh, Civil War II, number three for a buck. A lot of people like speculate on this one because I guess it's the uh, the one where Hawkeye kills Hulk, triggering the whole Immortal Hulk thing. So I've had good luck finding this book for nothing. So I think it's my fourth copy I've got for one dollar or less. So there you go. I got some run filler for my Kevin Smith, Joe Casada, Bendis, Brew Baker, Daredevil run that was phenomenal. Uh, so those particular ones are uh, David Mack and Joe Casada. So I got issue twelve. Uh, cool Joe Casada stuff there. Palmiati, who doesn't love him? Some Jimmy Palmiati. So got that. Phenomenal cover by three very talented individuals. So you got David Mack, Joe Casada, and Jimmy Palmiati all doing work on that awesome cover with uh, Kingpin bleeding out, making the uh, Daredevil logo there. Awesome cover on that one. And this is a good run. So I, one of my rereads I really want to do is I want to start with Daredevil number one, the Kevin Smith, and read all the way through to the Brubaker run at the end because it was consistent throughout. And I eventually, actually, I, I want to read past that, skip the Andy Deagle garbage, and go through and read the Mark Wade as well because, hey, Daredevil. Uh, and then uh, I think this might be a rebuy for me, but it was next to these other two, so I just threw it in the pile. So for one buck, I got an issue 14 as well. All righty. So the rest of these, this whole stack here. Uh, every book in it was 20 cents. So it was a good day to go because they had their, uh, they, they set up a folding table and put a ton of 20 cent comics on it. So that's how, you know, like when you go to this, when you hit the jackpot, because like a lot of these are going to be valiant books and the people who price the books there, I, I think they just hate valiant. <laughs> so because they just dump everything in there that, cause they don't want to bag and board it like the DC and Marvel stuff. I put a dollar on it, so usually I think they just say, screw it, uh, we're busy, we're just going to put it in these 20 cent bins. So I, I think you guys will see that I, I found some good stuff for 20 cents, and these are worth more than 20 cents. So first off, I've never seen this before, I don't know what it is. Uh, it's a Mil Malar World New Talent Annual 2017. So there's that, apparently it has uh, stories with Huck, Kick-Ass, Superior Nemesis, Empress, and Super Crooks. So I figured that'd be a cool kind of read for me because I like most of those series. Uh, we got some shiny goodness here. We got XO Man of War Zero. Let's see if I can get that awful reflection in there for you. There you go. Uh, awesome chromium cover, 90s style. Gotta love it. Had to get that for 20 cents. That's one of those books I owe. I have no idea about the content inside. I do want to read it because it's Joe Casada. And it's a beautiful book. I slipped it through it uh, after I bought it, actually. But uh, I've never been a Valiant guy. But after today's haul, I kind of actually do want to read some Valiant because I had some good luck today getting their books. I uh, got this uh, X Factor 71. Uh, this kind of starts the uh, their good Peter David era of X Factor with that cool team. You got Wolfsbane, Polaris, Strong Guy, uh, Multiple Man, some of my favorites on there. I think usually Richter gets thrown in on this team, too. Uh, but this is like the start of a new era for X Factor. So absolutely love that whole run, especially like that 2006 on up X Factor run. Some of my favorite X-Men ever. Um, so Jamie Madrix, he's, he's a kind of boy in my book. <laughs> so then I got this uh, Doom Patrol issue 20. Fortunately, I didn't have issue 19. I guess this is the first like scissor people or whatever. Uh, but hey, Grant Morrison, 20 cents. Had to put that in there because why not? Uh, we got from Mark Millar, Lanil Yu, Superior Issue 1. So I think this is supposed to be a something on a show or whatever. <laughs> but nonetheless, actually, I do dig this series. It's kind of like uh, Millar's version of Shazam. Um, so I have pretty much the rest of this run, I believe. I just didn't have this particular cover, uh, which is the A cover. I have the variant for it. So I figured why not get the A cover for 20 cents. We got something called Shiver in the Dark. 
which uh, I think I showed this book previously on my channel. I actually had like a remark by the artist Stuart Sager. So when I saw these, like, I wonder if these are signed too. And for 20 cents, I got issues one and two signed by Stuart Sager. So I thought that was really funny to find 20 cents signed comics. So I went and threw those in a pile. So, hey, 40 cents signed comics. Awesome. Uh, speaking of signed comics, this is maybe one of my finds of the day, I guess. We got Exo Man of War number one with a Bob Layton signature on it for 20 cents. So that pulled this one out first. Like, I guess I'm collecting Valiant now. <laughs> so you guys know how I feel about signed comics. So I think this is the book I pulled out that kind of started this uh, trickle down effect you're about to see of Valiant comics. So I got this uh, Bob Layton signed comic for 20 cents. So had to throw that in the pile. We got right number one. So. That's just like, there's like a whole like chunk of just a, a short box. It was just Valiant number ones. I'm like, I guess I'll get this one. I guess I'll get the next one. I guess I'll get the next one. So I just kept going. Here's Shadow Man number one. And all these are in pretty solid condition too for not being bagged and boarded. I mean, they still have the occasional like color breaking tick on them, but uh, no one likes Valiant here in the city. So I guess, hey, I guess reap the benefits. 20 cents for Shadow Man number one. We got Secret Weapons number one. No good gym shooter action there. We got the Second Life of Dr. Mirage number one. 20 cents. Here's a, this one was just a random poll. Uh, Frank Miller, Dave Gibbons, Martha Washington stranded in space. So I heard a little bit about this Martha Washington, Frank Miller stuff. So eh, for 20 cents, I'll check it out. Why not? Madam Mirage, number one. So Paul Dini, Kiv, Rockefeller, Top Cow. I thought that was a cool combination, so I went ahead and picked that up. Cool Greg Horn cover on that one. We've got some... Who doesn't love him? Some Wizard. So had to get me some uh, Wizard one-halves. Glad Legend's still in there because we got Midnight Nation one-half. Gary Frank cover, and I know Legend, he loves him some Gary Frank. So there you go. Some cool wizard one half action. We also have rising stars one half. So every time I see the wizard one half, so I got to get him. Back in the day, you had to pay ten bucks. Now you pay twenty cents. <laughs> All right, next up. I have no idea what this book is, but hey, like I said, I got the number one bug today. We got X number one from Dark Horse Comics. Thought that was a cool looking cover. So figured, why not go ahead and pick that up? It's pretty much in like near mint condition. Uh, I got Happy Number One, so I, I still have yet to watch this TV show on Sci-Fi because I don't have cable, but I've heard good things, so I figured why not go ahead and get a copy of this for 20 cents, because why not? We've got oh, some J. Scott Campbell action, Wild Siders Issue 1, so I have like that lenticular variant cover, so this is the A cover for that run, so I figured why not just go ahead and get a reader copy for that. I actually have the uh, lenticular signed by J. Scott himself. Uh, saw some Turner covers in there, so I had to get them. So we got Fathom, number one source book. Beautiful Michael Turner cover on that one. So had to get that. We got some Wildcats, number one. Uh, you got Grant Morrison and Jim Lee on this title. So actually, I'm putting that on my read pile as well. But cool Grifter cover on that one. And Jim Lee actually does the entire book, too. So I thought that was pretty cool. Back to Valiant, we got the hardcore number one. So there you go. Hardcore number one. What like the most 90s book ever? And you got Jim Lee on the cover too, because why not? So hardcore. Hardcore, baby. Hardcore. More Mike Turner, Fathom Primer number one. So beaut of a cover on that one. So I had to get that. Every time you see Mike Turner for 20 cents, you buy it. That's no brainer. Uh we got Magnus. I never even knew. I always called this Magnus Robot Fighter. I never knew that was a V until today. There you go. So this one is a flip book from uh, Valiant. So not only is it Magnus Robot Fighter number one, or I'm sorry, number five, it's also another copy of Rye number one. So there you go. I thought that was kind of cool. So 90s flip book action. And to add extra gimmicks, they have collectible cards inside. So there you go. 90s gimmicks. I love it. And then the last one, which I, as soon as I saw this, I just went to check out. I'm like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> so I just, I was seeing all these books and I'm like, man, 
it's a good Valiant day, but there's one book I always kind of wanted from Valiant. I always thought I had a cool cover. Um, v has to be the Mandela effect. I was thinking the same thing too, Ledger. But anyway, back to the story real quick. I was like, there's this one Valiant book I always kind of wanted. I don't collect Valiant, but I always kind of wanted this particular cover because I just thought it looked really cool. Uh, the art in it. And the last book in the last box was Rye Zero. So it's got a couple ticks on it. It needs a press. But other than that, in my opinion, a very beautiful copy of Rye Zero for 20 cents. So if there's one Valiant book I've kind of always looked for, it was this one. I always thought that was really cool. So I guess that's like the first full uh, Bloodshot or whatever, I guess. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Legend says Bloodshot. So there you go. So 20 cents, Rye Zero. So Thought that was maybe my find of the day. Thought very awesome. So very happy with that. I guess getting all those other Valiant number ones as I was going uh, gave me the good vibes to get Rise Zero. Uh, so uh, that's just the, the normal cover, I guess. It's not like the matte finish or whatever. So there you go. All right. We'll get back into the chat one more time. We'll keep trucking along here, getting through this July haul. We got Mr. Gretzky9966. What's going on, man? Long time no see. Uh, always like chatting with Gretzky in the chats. He he knows how to collect, that guy does. He's got some cool books. He he he, he dedicates his time to his characters and he he collects like he's got some of the coolest Archie books and the the one of the best action comics runs in the whole community. Uh Caleb Comics first says I paid $30 for mine. Great find. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um uh, mine's a 9-8 contender. Yeah, I'd probably put this one my I mean, I think there's, I counted three color breaking ticks. So I probably, nah, I'm not a grader. I put it like a 9 -0 probably. There's nothing else wrong with it. At least the whites are all white and clean. So I thought that was cool. <laughs> we got cat written figures in the chat. She says, but the real question is M, F, or K? Last time I checked, Colossus was spelled with a C. So Colossus, I guess. So there you go. <laughs> all right. So. Uh, the rest of the books I got. So like I, I said at the beginning of this, um, I was supposed to be on the hunt. Uh, there was like one Friday I kind of had off. Uh, so I was like getting some really good buys for the hunt. And then it just didn't pan out, unfortunately. So I guess I'll show you my hunt haul. <laughs> so I got these four books uh, at my shop. Uh, I actually had a $10 credit. Uh, so I got these four books for $15, and you're probably like, just show the books. What are you doing? So those four books were Batman, 426, so Death in the Family, Part 1. So you kind of probably know what the other three are at this point. You got book number two, New Stand. So there you go. You got issue two. Uh, you got issue number three, New Stand. So Jason God gets his you know brain smashed out there. And then you got issue number four. So you get the whole death in the family run, clean copies, 15 bucks. I could not pass that up. So these are actually four books I've been looking for since the 90s. And to get them for 15 bucks, obviously I would have preferred getting them for in the dollar bins, but that's not going to happen with these books around here. People, too many Batman collectors out there, uh, they're not going to let these books slip past them. So 15 bucks, I'll pay that all day for this run. So very, very happy with that. Also, like I said, I've, I've been hoarding them turtles like everybody else. So uh, I got a mail call today. Actually, I need to go back and leave some positive feedback for this seller because they did a great job packaging. I think I got this slab for about $20, $25, and then this book for a buck. So <laughs> I just went through this one in there. Uh, I made a best offer of the dollar and actually accepted it. And they they, sh they shipped it in a nice box, and this in itself was in a Gemini mailer. So I basically paid for like... The Gemini Mailer and got the book for free is the way I look at it. But I got Ninja Turtles 23, fun splintery cover there where he's in a suit and has like a wooden picket sign or something. So I love these older Turtles covers. It's so weird. But got that. And then, because why not? It was cheap. It was a 9.6. Got TMNT issue number 25. Thought that was a really cool cover. And for the right price, I just could not pass up on getting a turtle slab. So I guess I'm getting in the slab business now. <laughs> so got that. Very happy with that purchase. See, now I got to show off them slabs. So I was going to put this on the hunt, too. We've got 
Detective Comics 854. This is the variant cover from G.G. Jones. Uh, so this is basically the, the when Batwoman gets her run in Detective Comics uh, after the uh, Batman Reborn storyline starts. And it's got the Renee Montoya question as the backup. Uh, so I love this run. It's called, uh, I've always got the hardcover over there. I think it's called uh, Batwoman Elegy. So it's from Greg Rucka. It's a phenomenal read. I kind of want to try to reread that again before the series hits in October on the CW. Uh, because seeing the Comic-Con trailer and that stuff, I'm guessing they're going to go right to this book right here uh, to tell their first story on TV. So uh, definitely check this out if you guys are going to watch that CW show. Uh, so I'll absolutely love that read. And I got like two of the four J.G. Joe because he did four covers for the Batman Reborn stuff. Uh, two of the covers are behind those boxes up there. That's cover number three I need. I can't remember. It's like Gotham City Garage or something like that. It's the fourth one I need. Uh, so I got like the ones that are kind of harder to get, luckily. Uh, got this one. I think this was $30. Uh, it's a TMNT issue seven. Gold label, 8.5. Got it signed and a little personalization by Kevin Eastman there. So happy to have a gold label Eastman in the collection finally. Uh, so extremely happy with that. And I'm looking for that last book because I thought it was in that pile there. So here we go. Where'd you go, book? So now I'm going to start tearing this room apart again. <laughs> uh, we're live, pal. <laughs> well, I don't know where that last book's at, so we'll just go ahead and move on. And I'll look for it later. All right, so my last, I guess, kind of show off for today then. See, now I'm going to be looking and talking at the same time. It's going to be driving me crazy. Oh, well. Nonetheless, I did get me some Switch games this month. <laughs> Legend and his clap chance. So we've got Marvel Ultimate Alliance Part 3. So I've been waiting, what, 15 some odd years for this game to come out, and it finally happened. So happy they're going back to this brand. Um, so far, I've, I've played like maybe three or four levels through. It's a decent game. I, I like the, um, you know, always like me some beat-em-ups. Uh, I feel like they went more into the RPG elements than they should have in this one because you literally have to level up every single character as you play along. So if you guys remember the Civil War one, which was part two, um, it did a lot of leveling up for you. If you guys didn't want to bother with that, you could just have fun, play the game, and, you know, just go through and beat them up. This one, like... Wolverine here, you have to go into Wolverine's menu, you have to give them the ISO-8s or whatever gimmick you want to call it. Uh, you have to level up each individual power. Um, and then because of that, it just gets to the point where you have, like you put in a character, say, like, who's on the cover here? Uh, let's say Miles Morales. If you put him in and you don't use him for a while, he's going to be lower level. Hey, he's probably going to get his ass beat until you level him up a little bit more. So it doesn't have that same mechanic that had in Part 2 where they kind of just everyone auto-levels. Or they just kind of, it may as well not even exist in part two. Part three, I think they tried just a little bit too hard for those RPG elements. Uh, it's like, I think it's more like the uh, X-Men, the X-Men Legends games. That's what that, those games were called. Uh, I remember the first one, they had a lot of leveling up. So they kind of go way back to that one for this title. Not saying it's terrible, though. It's still a fun game. Wolverine's still the most overpowered character because he's a good striker. And obviously, in a beat-em-up game, you need a striker. Um Fortunately, Daredevil, I would picture him a good striker. Kind of sucks so far in this game. Maybe I need to level him up a bit more. But still using the uh, the old throwback to Wolverine because he's been the best character since X-Men Legends Part 1. So but definitely if you're a Marvel fan or you know a fan of the Ultimate Alliance stuff, definitely go get this game. I'm going to get the DLC for this anyway. I got to be able to play as the FF. I got to be able to play as my uh, you know 90s X-Men. So, because so far, like the only X Men in is Wolverine. So, come on, guys, we can do better than that. So, I got to pay my dang twenty dollars for the DLC. So, there's that. I'm still looking for that book. It's gonna bother me until I find it. So, uh, yeah. All right, we'll look for that later. Anyway, it's about one hour in. It's getting warm in this room. It's only gonna get warmer when that Comic Core hits. So, we'll go over the chat one more time, and then we will sign out for today, at least for the next hour and a half. Uh, so great legend says he loved all those ultimate alliance games. Mr. Fantastic was a great striker too. Oh yeah. My striker, I had like a strike team basically. And I think it was part 
who that was part one because that was the first one with the FF in it. It is Wolverine, uh, me and Katrin's favorite Colossus, <laughs> the Thing, and I think Sabretooth. That those four guys could punch through every wall in the game, basically, especially Wolverine, because you just level up his claws and then he's just unstoppable. Uh, but yeah, fan, Mr. Fantastic had that long reach, of course, so he was fun too. Legend well, says, stream forever. So there you go. If you guys couldn't picture that in your head, I did my best. <laughs> uh, Gretzky says, I may be adding up all my Archie books this Sunday. Oh, that'll be all. You got to let us know the results of that, man. That'll be that'll be epic, I'm sure. Gretzky says he's also a big fan of Batman and Detective Comics, too. So some more stuff. Those, Like I said, though, man, it's like I feel like, you know, Marvel side, you know, a lot of that older Bronze Age Marvel stuff's hard to find. But when it comes to Batman, like him and Spider-Man, People just see that stuff and buy it up no matter what book it is I, at this point, I feel like. <laughs> Legend, said, Legend wants me to give him one cornet voice, so I'll give him one cornet voice. Triple cheese, triple onion, double mayo, motherfucker. So there you go. <laughs> There's my uh, cornet for the day. Um, yeah, I'm glad my voice is back because I didn't have it last night. <laughs> Katrin figures bid $1 on the je death of Jason Todd. Hey, back in the 90s, that would have given you like four votes to kill off Jason Todd or to save him. So I voted to kill him off. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't don't hurt me. <laughs> Tim Drake's my boy. Uh, let's see who else we got. Uh, Caleb says his Rye Zero is a night eight contender. That's awesome. <laughs> Love them high-pitched cornies. So that's a great legend. All right, guys. With that. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'm going to go ahead and sign off and look for my uh, Green Lantern slab. I have no idea. I thought it was in that pile, but maybe I'll show it off on the Comic Corps tonight. Hopefully, I find it. But until then, uh, I'll see you guys in August on this live stream. And hopefully, I'll put out at least one video on this channel. We'll see. But until uh, next time, I'll see you guys. Comic Corps in an hour and a half. Pope Grammy auction in 30 minutes. Uh, tomorrow night, we're voting on the uh, Comic Corps winner to see who joins us in Baltimore. Uh, but until then, you guys, oh, the, the last gimmick. There, hey, Sting, how's it going? We're signing off, I promise you. Bye.